on episode 367 of Switchcraft, uh, the Switch Lite and its effect on what game developers might make. My first impressions of Dragon Quest Builders 2, plus there is a game that is 90% off and it is super good. Stick around to find out what game it is. This is Craig standing just outside your peripheral. And you're listening to Switchcraft with Bill. Craft is brought to you live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Tune in live over at twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp. This episode of Switchcraft is made possible by patrons like Rascal. Get Switchcraft and my other content ad-free for as little as a dollar over at patreon.com slash run, jump, stomp. And if you want to leave a voicemail like Brav did at the beginning, uh, try to make it a little less creepy than his, but... Go ahead and leave that voicemail by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash voicemail from any device, and I may even play it on the show. Uh, let's get started with Switchcraft. Okay, so let, let's start off with... Um, uh, actually, so f for those of you that don't know, I have a Discord channel. Uh, you can get to it by going to runjumpstomp.com slash Discord. In the disc... To in the, the community Discord, uh, we have a channel that is just for supporters. So people who are members on YouTube, and if you want to know how to do that, it's right down below if you're looking at YouTube. Uh, subscribers on Twitch and patrons. These are the, the, the three supporters uh, categories that can use that voice channel. We also have other voice channels, but from time to time, I hop into the, to the supporter voice channel and uh, chat with people while I'm playing a game. And that's just like kind of one of the perks for for being a supporter. Uh, so thank you to the people do, who do that. And uh, we, I was sitting there, I was playing Final Fantasy fourteen at my computer, and uh, I decided, oh, I'll hop in the in the voice channel. And we had three or four people hopped in with me, and we were all kind of chatting about um, the the Switch Lite because this was this weekend. And I totally meant to talk about this on Saturday's episode, but I I blanked on it and just forgot. Um, but T.F. Wagner, who's been a supporter for a very long time, he he, he was talking about uh, a, a fear that he had uh, as to what the appearance of the Switch Lite could do to the Switch library overall. And I, I think that he made a really good point, and it's something that I want to talk about. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today: uh, how the Switch Lite could affect what games de what games developers make on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so, for example, let me give you an example. A, a great example would be the game Snipper Clips. Now, Snipper Clips was pretty much a launch game for the Nintendo Switch. It came out right when the Switch launched and uh, uh, it, it's a game that demonstrated to everyone in a, in a wonderful way how uh, the Switch could be played in a way that is a very different. So if you haven't played Snipper Clips, basically um, you, you take off the Joy-Cons off the side and you hand one to somebody else. So this is a, a game that requires you to have those, you know, two controllers. And you have to solve, you have to solve puzzles by overlapping your characters and then pushing a button because your, your characters are made out of paper. You push a button and it basically clips the uh, paper, uh, you know, like a pair of scissors would. It clips the, the, the overlap and changes the shape of the characters. And then you can use those change shapes in order to solve the puzzles. It's incredibly clever. And if you have not picked it up, you absolutely should. Although you should only pick it up if you've got a Switch like this. Because I don't think that it would work on uh, the Switch Lite. Because you can't take the controls, controls off. And honestly, the Switch Lite, for all intents and purposes, is a single player machine. This is a machine that is designed to be played by one person. 
Can you do multiplayer stuff on it? I'm sure that you can. It's a little tiny screen. It doesn't have a kickstand. It's not going to work very well. And you're going to be better off if you've got the the OG Switch, as I've called it before. Um, with, with the idea that the Switch Lite is now out there, this brings up a criticism that I have had of video game consoles in the past. And it, it didn't really occur to me. And the reason it didn't occur to me is because they brought out a less powerful console. Well, I won't say less powerful. It's it's the same power is in this console. Um, the, the same power is in this console that is in, you know, my original Switch. They, they're basically the same stuff, you know. And the only difference is that this one can't be docked and the controllers can't come off. So it didn't occur to me that my that my criticism for other systems would apply to the Switch. And TF Wagner brought that to my attention and, and he made a good point. So here's here's my criticism of things like the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X. Uh, you, you make these, these uh, systems and uh, I'll, 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 I'll do it with the Xbox One X, okay? Uh, the fear that I had when the Xbox One X was coming out was that, okay, now we have a problem where there's a more powerful console on the market. And this more powerful console, is anybody going to design a game that requires that more powerful console? And my, my, I guess my... Uh, my response to that question that I asked, I guess I'm talking to myself in this uh, in this scenario, is that the developers are going to develop games for the lowest common denominator because that gives them access to the most customers. Developing a game that only works on the Xbox One X would be a bad idea. So developers make sure that the game runs on the Xbox One and then on the Xbox One X, it runs a little bit better. Maybe higher resolution or a higher frame rate, something like that. But for the most part, whenever you have a feature that is not on every uh, system, a lot of developers will ignore that feature. Here's another example. Uh, we can talk about the... the um, Oh, okay, the new Nintendo 3DS. You remember when that came out? And there was one game for it, I think maybe two, but there was definitely one game for it, and that was Xenoblade Chronicles. You could only play Xenoblade Chronicles if you had the new Nintendo 3DS. And that's understandable. They needed a little bit more power in order to run the new uh, that game because it was a port of a Wii game on the 3DS, which was pretty damn impressive, if, if you ask me. No other developer really took advantage of that. Everybody else said, uh, no thank you, because if I make a game that only will work on the new Nintendo 3DS, then I am leaving behind a whole uh, slew of, of people out there who only have the regular Nintendo 3DS, not the new one. And so developers ignored that, that new one and no games came out featuring it. Of course they would ignore that one. It makes perfect sense to ignore it. So what does this have to do with the Switch? Well, this Switch, the OG Switch, that has features that the Switch Lite does not have. So going forward, I think that some developers, they may look at the Switch Lite and they'd say, this is the lowest common denominator. This is the system that has, this is our baseline. You know, the extra features uh, like docked play and um, tabletop mode and HD rumble and the IR sensor, all of those features are only on this version of the console. So why would we support them? Well, Maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they would decide, uh, we're not going to bother with HD Rumble because the Switch Lite doesn't have HD Rumble. So why invest man hours or woman hours? Uh, why invest man hours into developing that feature 
or develop, developing for that feature if a large portion of the player base who is going to buy our game won't see any benefit for that. And I can completely understand why they would uh, make that decision. Am I happy with a decision like that? Absolutely not. I think that would be terrible because HD Rumble is awesome. HD Rumble is this thing that I thought was going to be a stupid marketing gimmick and it turned out to be friggin' awesome. Like, I love HD Rumble. I It's fantastic when a developer does it right. You know, uh, developers like Atui, developers like um, uh, Image Informed Games, if I'm remembering correctly, who, uh, whoever made, um, no, it wasn't Image Informed, they make the SteamWorld games. Uh, whoever made, my brain is is uh, blanking on the name of this game right now, and I love, uh, Blaster Master. Whoever made Blaster Master, uh, it, it, it's fantastic. And they, they, they nail the HD rumble. And, you know, I was talking to a developer, I can't remember which one, but I was talking to a developer about HD rumble and they said that it's sound files and that's how it works. Like they are actually playing sounds through the rumble, uh, the, the, the motors, the rumble motors in your joy cons. And that's why and they have all of these different gradations and variations because it's a sound file and they can manipulate it really, really easily. So, you know, that's a feature that is not going to be on every Switch anymore. Right now it's on every Switch, but come September 20th when the Switch Lite comes out, it's not going to be on every Switch. Now, yeah, it's already on 32 million Switch Switches, whatever the plural of Switch is. Um, it's on 32 million consoles. Uh, and I'm sure that that number will be higher by the time September 20th rolls around. But it's not going to be on every single Switch. So will developers start ignoring that feature? And I would say maybe. I mean, some, some developers already ignore that feature. They don't put in the extra effort in order to make sure that HD Rumble is awesome. Uh, and, and those are the games where when you're playing, like your, your joy cons are vibrating, like, like absolute bananas, uh, every single time something takes a step because they didn't take in the extra care to use HD rumble. And I worry, I do worry that a lot of developers will, uh, will choose to ignore the HD rumble feature. will choose to ignore well, I mean, everybody's ignoring that IR sensor right there, except for Nintendo. Uh, they'll choose to ignore uh, other things. Now, you know, I think that there's going to be some people out there that'll say, does this mean that people are only going to make games that'll only work in handheld mode and we won't be able to play on our screens, uh, on our TVs in docked mode? Um, well, guess what? There are already some games that do that. There are games that are basically mobile ports that require you to use the touch screen in order to interact with the game. Uh, so, I mean, maybe it all depends on how much effort it takes from a developer in order to, uh, put these features to use. Uh, I would say that, um, enabling docked mode probably not that much work uh enabling tv uh, i'm sorry kickstand mode or tabletop mode as nintendo likes to call it probably not that much work uh enabling hd rumble probably a lot of work and that's why most developers ignore it uh so tf wagner he like when we were talking on our on our uh supporter discord channel uh he brought up a good point and while I do think that it is a valid concern, I'm not too worried. I don't think things will change very much. I think in the future, uh, things will pretty much go the way that they've been going all along. And I don't think that we're going to suddenly get uh, games that don't use uh, the features that we have. By the way, there's a, there is some... Um, uh, some misinformation out there. I was listening to a podcast. I can't remember which one. They were talking about the uh, the fact they were talking about the Switch Lite, and they said, "Oh, and it's not going to have motion controls because the motion controls are in the are, are, the gyros are in the Joy Cons." And yes, the gyros are in the Joy Cons, 
but the Switch Lite does have motion controls. In fact, this actually surprised me, and I didn't realize it until I played uh, Labo VR. There's also gyro inside the Nintendo Switch itself. So, uh, you know, and just one more time, uh, talking about the price of the Switch Lite, I still think 200 is too high, especially when you're thinking about all of the things that they're taking out. Uh, you know, the automatic uh, light sensor that is on the front, they're taking that out. Uh, they're reducing the number of gyros in the system from three to one. Uh, they're taking out the, uh, I believe they're taking out the chip that allows them to encode uh, video over uh, USB-C. They're taking out the, um, what else are they taking out? They're taking out something else that was important uh, and I can't remember. Anyway, it, it seems like there, there's a lot of stuff that they're taking out. And if you were to ask me, uh, hey, Bill, I'm going to get a switch for uh, my first switch. Which one should I get? I would get the full one. I would get the $300 switch because it's awesome. And it's been awesome for a couple of years now. And it's going to continue to be awesome. Uh, but if you said, hey, Bill, I'm going to get a switch for Junior. And Junior is a, a young kid who... You know, obviously kids are not very careful. I'm going to say, get them a Switch Lite. It's cheaper, less moving parts. And I really think that that's who it's for. Not that if you like this, that you're a kid. Anyway, uh, let's take a quick break. We'll hear from our sponsors. And when we come back, I want to talk about the motorcycle that just drove by. And then I'm going to talk about Dragon Quest Builders 2. <laughs> All right, everybody, we are back. And Dragon Quest Builders 2 is now out. And I wasn't going to buy it. And then I bought it. I, I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I couldn't resist. Uh, I was watching some streams of it. And I was intrigued. And I definitely wanted to check it out. I watched um, Happy Console Gamer. Uh, if you guys don't follow him on YouTube, you absolutely should. He's, he's just such a positive guy. I really like his stuff. Uh, him and his wife reviewed Dragon Quest Builders 2. Uh, and I think they convinced me to pick it up. I, I'm not sure if it was exactly them that convinced me, but I was I'm now convinced. Uh, so this morning I was sitting there. Uh, I I bought um, uh, the voucher system uh, and I used it to get Dragon Quest Builders 2 as well as Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Uh, so I you know I've used the voucher system twice and. Uh, it saved me $40 so far. So I think that voucher thing is great. I'm very, very happy that Nintendo is uh, taking advantage of it. So uh, what did I do? This morning, it installed. I did a stream over on my Twitch channel, which you should check out, twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp, and uh, link down below if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, what do I think? Well, I'm probably about two hours into the game now. And I am definitely having fun with it. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm excited about where the game is going to go and the idea of, you know, building my city and making those decisions, going out and gathering materials and using them to craft new things and then, you know, making a blueprint and building stuff up. Uh, the one thing about this game that I despise and you can see you can see this if you watch my, on my YouTube channel. I've got uh, I'll have a um, what's the word I'm trying a uh, uh, first look up. I think it might already be up or it'll come up later today. Uh, but I, I, as I was playing it, <laughs> the 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 incessant talking that is just nonstop, where I'm just trying to play the damn game. Stop interrupting me with your nonsense is so annoying the characters that i am uh right now i'm hanging out with this dude and this girl and they just keep talking at me and talking at me and talking at me and i don't walk five feet without being interrupted now i know it's a japanese game japanese games tend to be very very heavy on the text in the very beginning and then as you play more it kind of subsides i was talking to my buddy lloyd who hosts uh nintendo pulse which go subscribe to that. Uh, I, he hosts Nintendo Pulse and we were talking about it and he was like, You're, you, you gotta get past this part and it's gonna, you know, you'll be able to run away and, and uh, be on your own and the characters will stop hassling you every five seconds soon. 
Uh, I haven't gotten to that part yet because, again, I've only played a couple of hours of it this morning. But I will say this. The mechanics of the game are really, really great. The graphics, it's a very, very pretty game. And I'm having uh, a lot of fun. And I'll be having a lot more fun once the characters stop interrupting me all of the time. Oh, yeah. And there was this really weird moment in the uh, in the first couple hours where the screen fades to black. And then they put like some some white text on the screen. I won't I won't explain what it is, but it's 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 like supposition. It's giving you story stuff, and uh, they put this this white text on the screen, and it's just like a sentence, right? It's a really short sentence, and that thing is on there for like twenty seconds, and I'm like, okay, so I read it. I hit A, nothing. I hit B, nothing. X, Y, L, R. I push everything. I push plus. Finally, okay, it goes away. So I was like, oh, that's weird. I had to push plus to advance the text. That's odd. Uh, and then there's another line of text. So I read it and I hit plus and nothing happens. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't have to hit plus to advance the text. The text just happened to advance when I hit plus. And then it's a second sentence on the screen, probably even shorter than the first one. And I got to wait another 20 seconds for this. Like they're like, you will read this, Bill. You will not skip this. There's, I hate, one of the things that I hate in video games more than just about anything is unskippable text, unskippable cutscenes. If I don't care, don't force me to watch it. If you're not going to make something compelling enough that I don't want to skip it, then don't force me to not skip it. Just either make it more compelling or just be fine with the fact that I'm going to skip it. You know, I'm okay with it if you guys, you know, if people are listening right now and they're like, oh, I don't care about Dragon Quest Builders 2. I'm going to skip to the next thing. And that's totally fine. I'm not going to like come in, come to your house and handcuff you and say, you will listen to this. So like that square, come on, fix this, make it like, because it's just irritating. It's, is it a big deal? Absolutely not. Does it detract from the game? Not really. Uh, I just, you know, I'm nitpicking. Uh, because so far I've had a, a really fun time with it and you know a lot of uh, people oh and uh, Fisto in chat is saying the load time is very very long as well and he is right about that the load times are very long uh, hey that's that's what you get sometimes I guess uh, oh yeah so a lot of people are having fun with it and a lot more people are playing Dragon Quest Builders on the Switch than are playing on the PS4 uh, this is really interesting uh, this is a post from uh, so underscore ethereal on Twitter. Now, I, I, I couldn't find their source on this, uh, but uh, maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's right. But it says here in the UK, 67% uh, of the first week, first week's retail of Dragon Quest Builders 2 were on Switch and only 33% were on PS4, which is very, very interesting considering that Dragon Quest Builders 1 originally released on PS3, PS4, and PS Vita before getting a Switch port in 2018. So I think it's pretty impressive that Nintendo Switch is taking up a, basically a two to one ratio. For, for every three copies that are sold, two of them go to Switch, one of them goes to PS4. And the PS4 has better graphics, uh, but I think that you know, people are coming around to the fact that graphics do not matter nearly as much as they used to. Uh, Nintendo seems to have understood this for a long time, but when you hit a certain point, the graphics are good enough that as long as I'm not looking at it side by side, I'm not really going to notice the difference. Uh, but anyway, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is really fun. Uh, be ready for uh, to be assaulted with text assaulted like I, i'm surprised i'm not bruised uh be ready to be assaulted with text but it's really fun and i'm looking forward to play a lot more of it okay uh let's talk about a game that i've actually talked about on the show multiple times it's on my top 50 switch games list i don't remember which place it is uh by the way if you didn't know i do have a top 50 uh switch games list and you can find that over on my youtube channel uh, it's five videos, 
and I go through my top 50 games uh, on the Nintendo Switch. So make sure you check that out, youtube.com slash runjumpstomp. Uh, but this is a game I have talked about on the show before. I have reviewed not once, but twice. Uh, I reviewed it once on uh, PC a long time ago, uh, like before I even started Switchcraft. And then when it got a Switch port, I reviewed it again because uh, uh, the developer sent me a review copy. And oh man, uh, Zeo Drifter. Zeo Drifter is one of my favorite Metroidvania games of all time. It's so, so damn good. And if you haven't played it yet, you're missing out. And why am I bringing it up now? This is a, that's weird, a little look into the past. I'm bringing up my review so I can have some gameplay uh, on the screen in the video. Um, so if you go back, or if you go back, I got distracted by shiny things. Um, if, if you are interested in this kind of gameplay, I've got some good news for you. Why is Bill bringing this game up again? Well, because of a tweet from... Uh, Atui, that's the developers who made it, uh, they said, have you ever played Zeo Drifter? Now is your opportunity to get your hands on this Metroidvania greatness at 90% off on the Nintendo eShop. You have nothing to lose. 90% off. So if I go to Nintendo.com and I type in Zeo Drifter, X-E-O, and, and it's X-E-O Drifter, not Z-E-O or Z-E-O, depending on where you're from. Uh, if I type in Zeo Drifter uh, on the Nintendo Switch eShop, that's $9.99. Uh, but I guess it's on sale now for a buck. And I don't know why it's not showing the sale price here uh, with them tweeting that out. I hope the sale's not over. This, can't, this was tweeted out on the 15th. Yeah, so yeah, this was tweeted out today. Uh, so if you haven't picked up this game, it is one of my favorite Metroidvanias that I've ever played. I finished it twice, and I never replay games. Honestly, I don't finish most games once. So the fact that I finished this game more than once uh, tells you something about it. So I, I will do a couple qualifiers here. Uh, this is not an ad, by the way. They're not paying me. Uh, so I will say this. Number one, uh, Zeo Drifter. The, the bosses are repetitive, but the game is awesome. The game is short, but the game is awesome. Uh, the gameplay is fantastic. And if you'd like, uh, oh, TF Wagner in chat is looking it up. He said, Zeo Drifter was my number 14 on my top 50 list. Thank you for letting me know, TF Wagner. See, he's awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, so if you haven't checked it out, you can get it super cheap right now. And actually, all of their stuff is on sale. And I think... I think I read someplace that you can get all of their games for like $5 right now if if you go and, and take advantage of the eShop sale. So if you haven't already, go do that. All right, I've got some feedback and we've only got like two minutes left. So we're going to lightning round this feedback. I asked you guys, which Nintendo Switch game are you most excited for in the coming re weeks? Reply with your reasons. And I said, uh, our choices were Dragon Quest Builders 2, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Fire Emblem 3 Houses, and all of them. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 won with 40%. Fire Emblem 3 Houses came in second with 35%. DQ two, uh, Builders 2 uh, came in last with 12%. And then 13% of people said that they're excited about all of them. Uh, let's see what people said as their reasons. Uh, Darkwing0810 on Twitter said, These all seem like good games, but our house won't be excited until Link's Awakening. Uh, Johnny Link, who's also a streamer and has a tattoo of my logo, uh, which is awesome, he said, Dragon Quest Builders 2 seems like a fun game to play with the wife. Excited to check out the co-op. Uh, Club Nintendork on Twitter says, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is close to, is a close second to me. I don't know which one he voted for, though. Uh, Webhead, of course. His name is Webhead. His avatar is Spider-Man. He says, I'm a huge Marvel fan, and the Marvel game will trump any other game on the console. And I, I can see why. You know, that makes a lot of sense if you're a huge Marvel guy. Uh, at Nelder72 says, Marvel looks okay, and I enjoyed the first one, but I kind of have to believe the hype that people are throwing behind Fire Emblem right now. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. And by the way, for those of you who, you know, I mentioned before that I was kind of on the fence about whether or not I was going to buy Fire Emblem, I bought it with my vouchers. So I've got Fire Emblem Three Houses already downloaded and waiting for me. Uh, 
Hopple says, just Dragon Quest Builders 2, uh, because no interest in the other two. Smashblock says, he, he throws the entire premise of my question away and says, Astral Chain. Uh, Shellshock Prime says, all of them, but so, but, but more so for Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, we got just two, three more. Uh, Roy, at RoyCop2103 says, it was a massive fan of Ultimate Alliance. I can't wait for the new one to co-op with friends. Uh, TV's Travis says, I want to be excited for all of them, but I don't have a Switch yet. Well, are you going to get a Switch, uh, TV's Travis, or are you going to get a Switch Lite? I would love to hear uh, which one you're going to get. And Kalai McPherson says, Fire Emblem. I love these games. Uh, oh, and James Murphy Murray says, uh, Marvel, the four-player mode looks great, and I have to agree. I'm very much looking forward to playing all of these games. And Dragon Quest Builders 2 is the first one out, out of this list, so I'm excited for it. All right, it's time to wrap up the show, everybody. Okie dokie. Become a part of the community over at runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can also watch the show live over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. I record on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Get a hold of me by emailing me, runjumpstomp at gmail.com, or you can reach out on Twitter at runjumpstomp. Use that hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. If you are looking for ways to support my content, it's super easy to do. Go to runjumpstomp.com slash slash thank you. And if you want to check out shows like this, there's more for you over at runjumpstomp.com slash shows. The music you're playing, you're hearing right now is Corneria Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. It's awesome. Thank you guys for watching and hanging out or listening. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.